In this video, I'd like to introduce folks to one of the new elements uh, that's a little more intuitive in Unreal Engine 5.0, and that is modeling options available to you whenever you're creating content in your level. Now, one thing that's changed in 5.x is up on the left-hand side here, before we used to have a bunch of tabs here showing us all of our different options. Epic has now switched to a drop-down menu that gives you all of your different options. One big change here is you now have a modeling interface that you can actually do a lot with. Similar if you're from to other 3D modeling software packages such as Maya, 3ds Max, Blender, etc. You have kind of this core shape element that you can build off of as far as getting started. So as you can see here, up at the top here, I have a lot of options already pre-created for me. So to give you a for instance here, if I go ahead and maybe select the box, I can come in and place my box. And what happens here is, let me go ahead and extend this out here. A modeling tab is going to appear with a bunch of different information for you here. So I can actually change you know, the width if I want to, I can also change the height, but I also have pivoting options as well. You can also automatically out of the gate set a material to your object. And also too, you can change as far as different subdivisions, similar to a 3D modeling software package, but also too, you have a couple of options as far as your output type. For starting out here though, go ahead and just leave that on static mesh. This is to help you as far as structuring your entire environment. Now, as you're working and designing, one thing you may notice is if we go back to the left hand side, notice how some of like the deform, the transforms, etc. You see how this is all grayed out? We actually haven't committed the box to the scene yet. We got it tweaked and laid out how we want, but down here, there's an option called Create Box. I'm gonna go ahead and accept. Now the box is part of my scene. And notice now over on the side here, you can see how different areas have now become active. And I can go in now and I can actually work with some of these options to start laying out and working with my new object that I made. So for funds here, let's go ahead and maybe choose, oh, I don't know, uh, maybe do a warp on it. Notice whenever you choose one of these, you will actually get an option as far as what that tool is capable of. And now what I can do here is if I go ahead and maybe I change the bend here, maybe set a bend degrees. So here's an example. It's still showing me the original, but I'm also able to come in here and tweak as far as the box goes. Now, the only thing that I can say as far as working with this process is from a material mapping standpoint, you will want to be careful because if you have a material applied to this, what's going to happen is Unreal is going to do its best to keep things the same as when it was the default cube shape that you had. So while this is great for going through and you can make unique shapes and designs, you can even see on the top here, you see how my polys and my face is already divided up here. So I'd have to go through and clean that up a little bit more. One other tool I wanted to show you also here is under here is you can actually create paths and create unique polygons. So for example here, if I go ahead and choose a path extension, And let's say that I need more of kind of a wonky shape here. I can now, through clicking, I can create 
unique shapes directly in the engine. So then I go ahead, I tell it to complete, and I now have my new shape available to me. As you can see, I've got some cleanup to do here on the top as far as the material and the face goes. However, this is a nice quick way whenever, for instance, maybe you don't have all of the assets available to you yet. Uh, somebody is still 3D modeling them, etc. This is a quick way that you can actually dive in and get different levels and structures in place so that you can actually work and continue to develop your game. So that's just some of the basics as far as the modeling mode, which uh, is way more predominant than previous versions. And at any point in time, just as a reminder, if you want to go back to a previous, like your selection, for instance, then you just have to click on this drop down here, click on selections, and you're back to the starting UI.